Today, we are back in Universe Sandbox doing your guys' suggestions. If you wanna leave a suggestion, make sure you hop onto the Twitch streams where I take suggestions live. I hope you guys enjoy. Someone said, stop streaming. <laughs> Turn Pluto into a black hole, honestly. I'm down for that, let's start with that. So, if we just crush it down to a black hole in its current state, it's not really gonna do a whole lot. Cause, if the mass is the same, it's not gonna suck anything in. So, we're gonna crush it down first, and then we're gonna make the black hole bigger and see kinda what happens to the system here. What we're gonna do is go turn our radius down, but we wanna lock the mass so the mass stays the same. And then we will crush it down. So this is not changing the amount of matter in Pluto. It's just making it, it's like crushing it. And if you crush it enough, it'll turn into a black hole because black holes are super, super, super dense. So crush, crush, crush. The ice is doing something. Whoa, okay. It's, it's looking a little strange the more we crush it. It's only four kilometers wide now, the radius. Half a kilometer, so this is tiny now. 91 meters, and it's still not a black hole yet. Six meters, we're gonna have to crush it a lot, like probably smaller than even regular human objects. Yeah, look, one centimeter, still not a black hole. And the, the mass is not has not changed at all, so it's the same amount of matter. One, it's less than one millimeter. Okay, it's like glitching out now. How much do we have to crush it to turn it into a black hole? 0.1 millimeters, less than a millimeter. Oh, okay, so at 0 0.01 millimeters, it finally turned into a black hole, and it's so small, it's kind of glitching out. What the heck is a kilometer? Yeah, we get the Americans here. <laughs> zero millimeters is the thing. Yeah, it is literally 0 0.01 millimeter. Here's Pluto versus a, a baseball. Like, okay, you can see how small it is. And all the mass is still there. So that is Pluto as a black hole. And if you watch, nothing is really going to happen because if the mass doesn't change, the gravitational pull doesn't change. So it's just going to stay in orbit like this. So we need to start turning up the mass to see it really suck stuff in. So if I start turning up the radius, it will start turning up the mass. Is it? Oh, oh OK. <laughs> it's now three Earth's mass. That was quick. Now it is two centimeters. So we can actually see it now. There's a black hole. At what point is it going to have an effect? That might have already started to affect its orbit because three Earths is pretty big now. Keep going. Four Earths, five Earths, 10. Oh, how big does it have to be? Okay, it's 17% of Jupiter now. Let's get it to like one Jupiter mass. Okay, there we go. One Jupiter mass. Okay, not much, even when it's Jupiter's mass. So let's keep going. Five Jupiters? Still nothing. Oh, okay. The game has very much slowed down. I got to clear all the asteroids because that'll help the system run faster. It is now half the mass of the sun. This is where I think stuff is really going to start to happen. Yeah, see, now it is pulling the entire solar system towards it. And now the Pluto and the sun are kind of binary with each other. Oh, this isn't good. How is this affecting Earth? I think Earth is still being pulled by the sun. Like the Earth's orbit hasn't really changed a whole lot. Life likelihood has dropped a little bit to 89. It's usually like 94, 93. Let's see if just this will affect the system enough to like destroy it. So yeah, Pluto is at half the mass of the sun right now. So they are definitely pulling on each other. You can see them kind of swirling around each other. All right, so that looks still pretty stable. I mean, it's not good, but Earth will be fine. The outer planets are not having a fun time with this. Uranus, Neptune, Saturn are all kind of gone. Let's just make it one sun and then see what happens. Still, they're kind of binary. We're gonna need it really, really big to pull enough to kind of absorb the whole system. So let's go bigger. Let's go, let's go. Okay, it's slowing down. That means it's calculating more. Ah! <laughs> it sped up really quick. Um, okay, it just like shattered the whole system into a million pieces. Goodbye, solar system. Where, where's Earth, dude? There's no Earth. Earth has somehow disappeared in the chaos. Make Venus blow up. Okay, I did say we would probably do that. Let's do that. To make this more interesting, because you guys love gambling so much, let's throw something at it, and we'll gamble on whether or not it destroys Venus. We're going to throw Io, one of Jupiter's moons, into Venus. So it'll be like this, going into Venus. But Io is going to be going the speed of light. 
Okay, speed of light into Venus. Will Venus survive this? We have to determine what counts as surviving. If there is any object left where the name still says Venus, we're gonna count that as surviving, okay? Io is not a small moon. You can see that it's fairly large. So we're gonna set this to one light speed. Very, 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 very quick. Okay, this is literally two and a half milliseconds per second. So this is slower than real time as Io is going to launch itself into Venus. There's still technically something called Venus. <laughs> it has to survive the entire collision though. Oh my gosh, wait, that's crazy. Oh, and yeah, no, it did not survive at all. There is nothing left. <laughs> Yeah, Venus is gone. So uh, Venus will not survive a light speed collision with Io. Oh, most people thought yes. All right, sorry, sorry. The non-believers, people who didn't believe in Venus turned out to be correct. Let's try it again. And instead of throwing Io, we're gonna throw something very small, okay? Like a, like the Great Pyramid of Giza, dude. All right, Great Pyramid of Giza versus Venus. Okay, same things are gonna apply. We're gonna go light speed into Venus. Do you guys think it will survive this? It did not survive Io, but this is significantly smaller. That is not small. Great Pyramid of Giza compared to a planet is tiny. 97%, 98? Oh, most people think it's gonna survive. Here comes the pyramid. I'm a bit worried. This is way smaller than Io, so I have a lot more confidence, but I don't know for sure. Let's see. Okay, collision it immediately got destroyed when Io hit it, so this looks a lot better already. And is that going to be it? Okay, we still have a shockwave. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, Venus actually held up very well. It was like a big impact still, but... Overall, Venus was pretty much untouched. So yeah, most of you were right. Someone wanted me to collide two Ton 618s. So let's do it. I think I have Ton 618 saved, or at least like something like that. Phoenix A maybe? I have Phoenix A, which is bigger. So let's do that. Phoenix A versus Phoenix A. What's gonna happen? Will they combine with each other or will they explode? Okay, yeah, there's our two black holes. Here we go. Oh, I'm scared. Oh, okay, they combined, they did combine. I thought they would explode. <laughs> now it's just two combined into one really big black hole. Bro, nothing happened. I mean, yeah, they combined. That was kind of anticlimactic. I do want to see what would happen if it exploded, so I'm just gonna explode it. And yeah, it does, it does supernova out. This is what I thought would happen. Cause like when two stars collide, that's what happens. Okay, now we're gonna send the entire Proxima Centauri system through our solar system. Proxima Centauri, which is the closest star to our system. Like this, and then can I add planets to it? Oh, does it have it? <gasps> it does. Okay, so it actually does have Proxima Centauri's planets in it. And it just has Proxima Centauri, and then it's got three planets orbiting it. Okay, I aimed it right at the sun. So if they take each other out and explode, that would be bad. That will probably cause a supernova and kill Earth. You can see it takes months for, like years actually, for the stars to get close enough for anything to happen. Cause we're already in the year 2020. So in the year 2114, we're gonna check Earth. We need trails on. Oh. Wait, what happened? Did it just get absorbed? It did, look. The sun's mass is now bigger. Okay, wait, that actually might be really good for the system then, because that doesn't seem like it affected the orbits too much. The solar system now has extra planets. Proxima Centauri D is orbiting very, very close. I think Earth's gonna survive this pretty easily, actually. So we're waiting till year 2114. 21. Okay, oh, I went a little bit too long, but I think Earth's probably fine. Oh wait, actually, it's really hot. 65 degrees is the average temperature. It's really hot because the sun is now brighter. So I wonder, is the life likelihood above 50%? Let's see. 66.1, it is. Okay, it's, it went down a lot, but it is still above 50%. Congratulations. Earth is very good at sustaining life. I think this would definitely cause a mass extinction and most species would go extinct, but I think humans would figure out a way to survive even with our very, very hot average temperature of 64 Celsius still rising. Around the equator, we're getting almost 90 Celsius. So yeah, that's very hot. Humans would probably have to go live closer to the poles to not burn up and get 
sunburned just from being outside for one minute. Throw the Great Pyramid of Giza at a billion times the speed of light at the Earth. I'm down for that one. I don't know if we can go a billion times. Let's try a hundred times the speed of light. Do you guys think Earth can take the Pyramid of Giza at a hundred times the speed of light? Venus survived at one times the speed of light, but this is gonna go 100 times that. Are we even gonna be able to go slow enough to see what's going on here? I'm going max slow motion. So this is 0.01 milliseconds per second. I am a little worried for Earth here. This is super, super slow motion. Great Pyramid of Giza looks like it's gonna hit like China around there. Let's see what happens. Uh, okay. Oh my gosh. That's like an instant shockwave covering the whole surface, but Earth is still here. So let's see if it explodes or what. Okay, tons of gas, so it looks like it's gonna lose its whole atmosphere. I think the planet will survive, but not a single organism will survive this. Pretty much guaranteed. What's our life likelihood? Oh, 0.1. It was me, I survived. No way, no way. Okay, obviously, yeah, that's not good. <laughs> but Earth as a planet survived. Life is gonna have to re-evolve from scratch again, but <laughs> Earth is okay. I think we need to try that again, but a thousand times light speed. So this is 1,000 times the speed of light. That's crazy. I mean, this is unrealistic. Nothing in the universe can go this fast. If it still survives, we're gonna make the pyramid bigger. Okay, this is the slowest you can make it go. This is literally the slowest you can go in the game. Okay, once again, a giant shockwave, and this is instant. It looks like a similar thing's happening where the whole atmosphere is gonna fly off, but I think as a whole, the planet will survive once again. How hard is it to destroy something? Round three, bring, bring, bring Earth back here. We need something bigger. If we make the pyramid 10,000 times bigger and make it go 1,000 times the speed of light, what do you think is gonna happen? So that's 10 times bigger. That's 100 times bigger. That'd be 1,000 times and then 10,000 times bigger. Oh, that's actually big. I don't know if Earth will survive this one. You can actually see the pyramid compared to Earth this time. Like that is not a small object anymore. Here we go. Okay, this isn't good. I think Earth might have died. Just give it a second. We're, on, we're still in super slow motion, so we don't really know what's happening. Oh. Yeah, yeah, dude. Okay. Oh, wait, the core survived? No way, no way. Part of it is still alive. It did not completely disappear. <laughs> that is not complete death. 11% of the planet is still here. That doesn't count. I said, I said, if there is any object that is still called Earth left, Earth survived. We have to determine what counts as surviving. If there is any object left where the name still says Venus, we're gonna count that as surviving, okay? The planet is no longer the same. It is a completely different planet, but technically I would say that survived. That looks like Earth. Come on. It doesn't even say Earth. What does it say? Tell me what this says right here. Earth, and it still says planet. Earth, the planet. Atmosphere survived. Water is still here. I don't want to hear it. Earth is still here. Earth survived. It is spinning very fast. All the water went to the equator. Also, um, that was enough of an impact to shoot it out of the solar system. So, <laughs> I mean, it wasn't good. Promote your shop. Spaceshipyt.com, everybody. Get your Pluto Hate Club merch. We got hoodies. We got shirts. We got stickers. We got pins. It's all really cool stuff. Spaceshipyt.com. Go buy some. It's really cool. Launch a sun-sized watermelon at Earth to see if it gains more water. Okay, I'm down for that. I don't think it'll work, but let's try it. So we're gonna launch. Wait, a sun-sized watermelon? That's just gonna eat it, right? I feel like we start smaller. How much water is on Earth right now? Someone remember 1.43 e to the 21. That is how much water Earth has. Let's go big enough to kind of see a comparable size here. Okay, yeah, we're getting there. A watermelon that is 10% the size of Earth. Why is it shiny? But it could just like oh, cause Earth to heat up so much that it loses water, you know? Okay. It didn't change, right? It got more water for a second. It was 1.43 and now it's 1.42. So it did go down. That's kind of funny because <laughs> the watermelon was made of water. Let's try it one more time for our final suggestion of today. And we're going to make a sun-sized, I'm worried this will just completely consume the earth, but we are gonna throw a sun-sized watermelon into earth now. We need to be kind of far away because of how big it's gonna be. Okay, there's earth size. Oh, I think it's still too close. 
Okay, I don't think you guys realize how big the sun is. <laughs> this isn't even there yet. Sun-sized is very, very large. That is the sun-sized watermelon now. Earth is just gonna get eaten. Let's just see what happens. Here it comes. And it is now, okay, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought would happen. Goodbye, Earth, into the watermelon. How does this affect the system? What's our mass at? Oh, it's about as massive as the sun too. So this is gonna have a big effect on the system also. Right? I feel like it should. No way it doesn't have any effect. Okay, that's actually crazy because it's as massive as the sun. All right, thank you all for coming. We are gonna explode Pluto to end our stream today. Goodbye, Pluto. Wish I could do that for real. Hey.